Hello friends on the social networking sites, Blog TV, Justin TV, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes and etc. Today I'm going to introduce you to a Linux 32-bit and 64. Ping Guy OS Linux and this is their website pingaiOSLinux.com Okay, so what is Pingai OS Linux? Pingai OS is an out-of-the-box working operating system for everyone, not just geeks. It's an open source platform, which means you don't require a license to use it. It is a free program, okay? And it is also an open source AI code. This OS is for people that have never used Linux before are for people that just want an out-of-the-box working experience. It basically means this Linux comes, friends, with not, with not most but every tool that you would use on the internet. An example, VCL, sorry, VLC player. It also comes with Firefox browser, Thunderbird Mail News, uh, BitTorrent client and quite a number of different codecs. So basically it is for people that just want an out of the box working OS without doing all the tweaks and enhancements that everyone seems to do when installing a fresh copy of Ubuntu or Linux based distros. Okay. So we all know if we've tested out uh, Ubuntu or Mint, we have to install a few extra programs. Well, lucky for us, everything is built in. Now, I will give you a, a base introduction to it. On this website, if you don't want the hassle of burning the ISO to a disk, you basically can buy the DVD and get it shipped out to you, okay? By clicking the button at the top here, DVD, okay? Here you have Ping Guy OS 32 bit direct download, or you can use the BitTorrent if you wish. On the right, you have the 64 bit version or the BitTorrent. So you've got the direct download or the BitTorrent. Okay, so if I want the direct download of the 32 bit, I click here, and it will automatically start to give me the direct download. Which then basically you would save it to your desktop or your downloads folder for convenience. Okay, so what does it consist of? Well, here is a few uh, screenshots for you. Basically, whenever you boot from the CD that you have burnt the ISO to, you will notice this screen. Now, if you don't touch it and you want to test the live CD, leave it and it will automatically boot into the live CD within 28 seconds. If you wish to install it on your computer, scroll down with your arrow keys on your keyboard to start the installer directly. Okay, and it will start to install the software for you. In the process, it will ask you for a username, also for administrators password which is called a root password okay 
Now it's very important that you do make your root password as secure as possible. So do use the lower keys and upper space keys on your keyboard. The next screen you will see will be this one here, where you'll see the process of it going through the installation. Whenever Pingay OS is booted up fully from the live CD, this is what you will see in front of you. You will also see on the top left hand corner a small disk where it will say install Pingay OS. Okay, so basically if you tried it out on the live CD and you like it, and you wish to install it on your computer, just double click on the icon. On the left you have a dock bar here with your downloads, your music, folders and etc. And your computer, this one here at the top, basically is your home folder. It will show you your hard drives, your CD-ROM drives and etc. At the bottom it comes by this dock by default with the, uh, the players on it. The VLC media player is already pre-installed. The Room and Box music player is also installed on the Firefox browser and etc. This here gives you basically the top left hand corner you'll see like a small uh, a small circle with like a blue dash on it. If you click that it will give you a drop down menu. Here you've got places where you will have your computer, your home folder, your network, your desktop and your rubbish bin. Below that you have your system settings. You have your package manager and your control center. You've also got your thermal. For those that don't know what a thermal is, it is something similar to a DOS CMD command system in your Windows operating system. You've got a lock screen, a logout and a quit. Now if you, click the quit, if you click the quit button, you will be presented with a, a small box that will give you the option of clicking restart or shutting down your computer. Here in the center you've got your applications. If you click accessories, you will get all your accessory applications. If you click internet, you will see your internet programs and etc. Now, your system tools will also give you your update monitor. If you install it, you want to click Update Manager and get the latest updates. Okay. It also comes with Wine already pre-installed. Now, for those that don't know what Wine is, Wine allows you to use a Windows program. Okay. It creates a temporary folders and etc. for your Windows program that you want to use on this particular Linux distro. You also have a program called Play Play on Linux which basically allows you to run a Windows game or a Windows program. You do have administration tools, same as you would have on a Windows operating system, and you do have preferences. Now here is basically showing you how to create a folder by going to File, OK, beside where it says Desktop, where you can create a folder. Now here is your home folder. If you notice where it says computer on the dock on the left hand side, okay, this is your home folder where it gives you your hard drives, your floppy drives and your system files. So you see devices on the left and you see personal, okay, and the entire network. This here is your home folder where your music, pictures, downloads, videos, Documents, table plates, and public folder is. And this is screenshots, friends, of Pingai OS 11.04. Now, what I can say about this operating system is I do have it installed 32 bit on one computer and the 64 bit on the other. I have been testing it out for over a week now. And you do need at least two gigabytes of memory to use it. Don't put it on a computer that's only got 500, okay? Because it won't run for you.
This is basically your email clamp, okay? Thunderbird email clamp. If anybody doesn't know what it is, it is a secure email clamp for using for your email, okay? And you can add your account and make it up as you go. As you go. This is a bit torn to clamp here that you see in front of you. Anybody that has used bit torn in the past. And this is the music player, okay? This is the rim, ribbon, ribbon box music player. You will notice here in your music player, this allows you to keep all your music files. You also have Lost FM Radio, and if you listen to podcasts, you can click podcasts and download podcasts, okay? And it also has a Ubuntu One account where you can send up for a free account. It is a good music player, and it does work. This is the VLC media player where you can use for broadcasting or playing videos on your computer. Now this one here is your thermal. It's like your Windows DOS command. Not a lot of basic users would use the DOS command. Uh, if you're using the Windows DOS command, you can type in chk dsk forward slash f for fix or forward slash r for repair. Basically, you can use the CMD, the command system in your Windows operating system for doing many a thing, for transferring files, for checking IPs, for tracing, for pinging, and basically for using it for open control panel, or deleting directories, or removing a virus. The terminal can be used for the same purpose. You do have to type in SUDO, then it will ask you for your root password, okay, which is a security release thing. You can type in different commands as you learn them, a forward slash update apps all or etc. Okay, you can also type in help and it'll give you the basic commands. The same as a Windows DOS command if you open it up on Windows 7 and run it as administrator and type in help, you will get the basic commands which you can use. So don't be scared of using the terminal. If you're not sure what the commands are, there's a lot of information on the internet. Type into Google, uh, ping AOS, uh, Bice commands and you get a list of different commands you can you can use okay it is a good way of learning friends how to use the binary system and etc this here basically is your backgrounds you can get more online and basically only give you two okay but you can get more online you also can change your fronts and your themes by clicking on these buttons Now this is your Suntec package monitor, okay? Now I'm going to give you a tip if you use Linux distros. Some Linux distros are required to, you are required to use the Suntec package monitor to update your system. Some of them don't have the update monitor installed, but you can install it here through the Suntec package monitor. If you are having a problems with uh, Ubuntu Linux, or Mint Linux, or this particular Linux of updating, or you find that it's buggy, uh, basically you can open your Suntec package manager, reload, mark all upgrades and it will upgrade all your packages that's required. You can also type in DEM, deny host, which will basically give you a few programs to harden your Linux distro. Deny host basically prevents what they call SSH brute force attacks. You can also type in harden and you can put a few hardening tools on your Linux distro. Friends, I would recommend that you use, <coughs> excuse me, an antivirus program, whether you're using Linux, Mac, or Windows. To use one in this particular distro, you can use one called CLAMTK, and you can install it on the package monitor, or you can install it in the software monitor when you update the system. Also, we can install Firestarter Firewall here, and it's very simple to use. Just by typing into the search box, Firestarter, and it will allow you to install it you will then find it when you go to your drop down menu you will see your firewall starter program where you have it installed you also can fix a uh, broken packages here by going to the top click on add it and click fix broken packages so if you find out you've downloaded the package and it's not working properly for you then go you can go to add it and click fix broken packages here at the top 
Okay, when you open this, you will see a wee menu bar at the top also, at the top left hand side of your screen. Okay, what you see in front of you here is the control center for Ping iOS Linux, okay? We all know that Windows 7 has a control panel, Windows XP and Windows Vista. Okay, so basically Linux also comes, some Linux distros comes with the control panel. And this is Ping OS control panel. Very simple to use friends, okay, very simple to use. And over here you have screen saver which is usually set, I think it's about 5 or 10 minutes by default. When you open the screen saver, you can pull the slider across and set it for the maximum of 2 hours. So when you're not using the computer, the screen saver will not come on to that particular time that you have set it. You've also got your power management, which basically, if you're using a laptop, you can set it for power saving, or you can change it from default 15 minutes to never. Down below under hardware, you have additional drivers. <coughs> now, if you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're using the onboard drivers, you don't need to worry about them, okay? But if you are using a graphics drivers, click additional drivers, it will scan your system, and it will present you with drivers. I would recommend that you use the one that says recommended, okay? Because sometimes you run into problems. Remote desktop, you want to basically open that up and untag it. So you're not allowing anybody remote access to your computer. Like, like every Windows operating system, there's small tweaks you can take to harden your system and to make it a wee bit more secure. Some people call it cloaking. Personally, I believe it's turning off programs that are basically, you're not going to use and they're using up some of your processes, okay? So basically, the less processes you have run, the more uh, your system's going to be far better for you, okay? Uh, broadcasting accounts, broadcasting preferences, disk utility is basically shows you your hard drive and allows you to check your hard drive. Now you can use disk utility too to check if you've got a problem with your hard drive and also if you want to use an external hard drive and etc. Okay. So your mouse allows you for tweaking your mouse clicks. Your monitor is basically for your monitors and there's also a couple of other ones here that you can run dual monitors with. If you wish to log out of the season then basically this, this is in front of you. Okay. Now when you are installing it on your Windows computer make sure that you've got over one gig of RAM, okay? Because it does take over one gig and it does take a half decent processor. So if you're going to use a Pantolin 1, I wouldn't recommend it, okay? But if you're going to use a Pantolin 2, so-so, uh, Pantolin 3, Pantolin 4, no problem, okay? So if you've got a good CPU and plenty of power in your computer, it's a good operating system to use. Now, when you go to install Firefox by default that's on it, even though the HOGA icon, when you first go to start Firefox, it does already come with your ad blocker, your what, and all your plugins that you need automatically. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is update it if you do intend to install it. Now, some people have installed Linux side by side, and they've had a problem whenever they've decided to remove it. And they've had to go into their command system basically, and they've had to sort out their master boot record and etc on their Windows computers. I would recommend it if you've got a spare drive to put it on a spare hard drive. Or you can install it on a VM virtual box. Okay, and run it on the VM virtual box. But you'd have to download that program to use it. Now this particular Linux does come with a VM virtual box in it. It also comes with a setup with a lot of tweaks. And I can give you a tip, some a couple of these panels at the top here that you don't require, right click and, and remove them because they do seem to use a lot of CPU. Now, I honestly love this particular one. I've had no problems with it up to now. I didn't know about it till last week because I do a lot of Linux reviews and I do a lot of test night Linux desktops, okay? So I have come across Fedora 16. I have tested it out, but don't recommend it to the basic user. 
but I would recommend this to a basic user, okay? And if you're not sure about something, don't be afraid to ask the PC Care Mon. If I know the answer, I will tell you. If I don't, I will help you get the answer, okay? They also have a formula on their website where you can basically ask for help. And they also have what they call a live IRC chat program. Now, IRC chat programs are used by most technical guys on the internet now, okay? Because they prefer to use them. Now, if you click live IRC, you can actually chat. If you've got a problem and you can talk to the people that's on the formula, okay? So if I click live IRC chat, You can actually go in and chat with people on the internet. Another good place to go would be the formulas here. And you will find common questions and answers that other people have had. Also, whenever it is sitting on the desktop when you update, you get some, some lovely background wallpapers. And you can see this small screenshot here in front of you. Okay, so that's taking us back to where we were a couple of seconds ago there. Okay, friends, Pingai OS. The website is pingaios.com. 32-bit or 64. Okay, now, if you're not sure how to burn an ISO, okay, it is quite simple by using your own software. Now, if you were using a piece of software that I use that already come with this computer when I bought it, uh, I'm going to just find it here. If you don't have software on your computer, you can down a program called Freeburn. Okay, it, it will allow you to use it on a Windows operating system. Linux has come with free software to use. Oh, flip, I can't even find it. Uh, Okay, I just want to see if I can find this one that I use, and I'll show you basically how you do it. Now you can get VA, I think it's called ISO Burner on the internet free too. Okay, so you want to make sure that you've got your burner before you even decide to download it. Okay, let me see what this is. I use up many different programs on the... Uh, Maybe I'm going to see Cyberlink, Cyberlink. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so let me let me go here. Uh, let me go to downloads. When you're looking for a program, you can never find it. <laughs> but it's definitely on the computer. Uh, let's see, Explore Windows, Windows. Okay. Hey, just give me a second and I will find it for you. It's... Nope, it's not that one. Direct Snapcam Studio. Okay, so basically what you do is, okay, you click, uh, if it's a 32 bit, you click Pink iOS 32. It will automatically start to download, okay. 
And basically you can save it to wherever you want to put it. So I'll put it in the downloads folder here. Now, depending on your internet connection, okay? Depending on your internet connection. That's my burner there, but I just can't remember the name of the burner. Uh, let's retry the download. Uh, let's remove that one. Now, depending on the speed of your connection, okay, you download your ASO, okay? Now, if you're using a burner, you will see the burner here, okay? So, in the meantime, I'm going to find this uh, free burner, ISO burner. Okay, you have a free ISO burner here. Uh, okay, ISO image burner, free image CD burning software. Okay, this one in particular here, you want you can download if you don't have a software burner on your computer. Okay, it's a free ISO burner, freeisoburner.com. Okay, and these are the screenshots that basically show you how to use it. Okay, so basically here, you browse to where you put the ISO on your computer, you set it, and you just go burn, you go through, okay, finalize the disk, tick that box, and it'll tell you exactly whenever it's completed, it will check the disk to make sure it's burnt, okay? And this is how you burn an ISO image to a disk. Okay, so that is the website there, and you just basically download it. It is compatible for Windows XP 2003 Vista on Windows 7 and it works with Windows 7. Okay, the program has been tested in Windows 7 32 bit and 64. Okay, and it's called Free ISO Burner. Okay, friends, that's Ping OS from PC Caremon. Thank you very much. Please follow me on Twitter and please support me on Blog TV as PC Caremon. Also, please support me on Justin TV PC Kermo, and please support me on YouTube, which is Justin TV PC Kermo. I'm also on Podmatic, on iTunes, and on the internet. So, if you type in PC Kermo into your search bar, you will see a number of places. Feel free to help us, and feel free to get involved. Please support us on our website, www.pccaremo.webs.com. Okay, thanks. Thank you. This is Ping Guy OS 11.4 Linux. Thank you very much.